Jesus speaking, he said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your father, mother in heaven. For God makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your sisters and brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as God, your heavenly Father, Mother, is perfect. So I would like you to consider the degree to which you interpret your life, your day, by to what degree things went the way you wanted them to go. In other words, did things go your way? This is a big problem. We like it when it goes our way, and that's not a problem. It's okay to like it when it goes your way, but when you start to notice what happens for you emotionally when it doesn't go your way, whatever that may be, I mean, that can maybe be as simple as you walk downstairs and you're looking forward to eat something to only realize somebody else has eaten it. Right? That might be, if you live with other people, that can be a factor. Or if you're driving and somebody's not paying attention because they're texting and they miss, you know, to be able to make a turn and that makes you late and things didn't go your way in that moment. And I assure you that the more conscious you become, the more you will see that other people will create obstacles for you to have your way. Because we are seeking to be in touch with love and in, in flow with that energy of God and love. So when somebody does something that feels like it robs us or it affects us negatively, it's often because they're not conscious. They're not conscious of how their action is affecting other people. And on this path, as you continue to progress, you become hyper aware of how your actions affect other people. And hopefully, you want to have minimal negative effect on other people. Now, an enemy, according to word etymology comes from a Latin word, which is in, which is, means not, and then from the word amicus, which means friend. And amicus comes from the root word, word, word of amare, which is love in Latin. So a friend is somebody you have love for, and an enemy is somebody you do not have love for. And what Jesus is essentially saying is, how can you not have love for everybody? Well, if they do this, or they interfere with my ability to do this, or they're just so insidious, or they're consciously trying to you know, ruin my life, or, or make things miserable for me, how can I love that person? Well, it's easy. We don't base our love for somebody on their actions. We base our love for somebody on the fact that they are human beings. Everybody here except myself as children. So you will be able to list countless times when your children's children did things that emotionally caused you angst. They did not do the thing that was cooperative that you needed. They did not say the thing that you wish they said. They did not do the thing you wish they did when you asked them to. So that creates emotional agitation and that's normal. Do you at that moment make them their, an enemy of yours? No, because at the base, you love them. Why is it that we cannot extend that to every human being? Because our consciousness is not there yet. Because the, the global consciousness encourages these people are okay and these people are not okay. And the people who are not okay are doing the same thing. So if you think about that, it's like, okay, here's this person who's my enemy. And from their side, they're going, well, these people are good and these people are not good. Like, everybody's the same. But attaining that consciousness means you have to have a relationship with your emotional self to go, somebody did something that was not in accord with the way I want it. My emotions spiked up. 
And then I began a process of condemning that person or whatever, you fill in the blank. That will make your life miserable. It really will. Because of the tension and how it turns you against other souls. But there may be some temporary relief in that you don't have to care about that person if you make them your enemy in your mind. We call that instant gratification. Oh, this person did something, I make a case against them, that's it, I wash my hands of it, I'm done. I consider that kind of lazy, actually, for what we're trying to do. What's much harder is to, okay, that person's actions caused me emotional angst, caused me difficulty in my life. Maybe even it was intentional. Have I ever done something intentionally because I was angry, because I was unconscious? Probably if you were honest, you could say that you had at some point. So we could say it's human nature to make mistakes. Is it human nature to be malicious? I, I don't think it's human nature to be malicious. But I do think it's human nature to make mistakes. Because how else are you going to grow and evolve? Your divine nature... That's, that's a choice if you're going to aspire to that. This term human nature is often to me thrown out as a way to rationalize behaviors that are not particularly evolved. For example, it's human nature to want to beat somebody to a pulp if they say something nasty to you. There's a lot of people who believe that. That's just a n natural impulse, that you have to crush people because they insulted you. I don't consider that human nature. I consider that a choice based on a certain level of consciousness. And whether you do that physically or you do that metaphysically, I would like you to stop making that choice if you notice that you do make it. Now, making the choice to go regardless of what somebody does, they are a soul created by God and therefore they deserve my love. That does not mean you have to hang out with them. That does not mean you have to agree with what they say. That does not mean you have to give everything to them because there's other considerations. But you cannot shut them out of your heart as an enemy. And if everybody did that, what, what does it do? It forces you to see the person in a different way. And that's work. That Jesus is saying, you got to do that. One of the gateways to facilitating that is praying for this person. When you pray for them, you want something positive to happen for them. You want something that they want that is in accord with love to occur. And if you have a hard time praying for somebody who you have considered an enemy, then you go, okay, this means that I'm not there yet. Is it impossible to pray for them? No, it's a decision that you make based on your, how you could say, on your will. Do I have the will to overcome the emotion? I believe you do. I know it's in there. Because anytime you wonder if it's possible, you go, well, how come I can do it with my kids, but I can't do it with other people's kids? Because everybody is somebody's kid, right? When you take it on, you begin to realize whether somebody is trying to scam you or somebody has political views that you think are completely self-centered and they're, they're lying to you. You've often heard me say that people do what makes sense to them. So when people do things that are illegal, and that hurt other people, it's because they, they rationalize it according to their life history, to what they've seen, to what has been made okay, to how else am I going to do it. And we can look at ourselves and go, yes, I'm sure we've done that at times. But even if you don't relate to the very thing that they do, we look to the example of Jesus who at the moment of his crucifixion, the Roman soldiers were pounding you know, nine inch nails through his hands and through his feet. And luckily, I mean, sorry, likely through some very painful areas. I mean, going through flesh is painful enough. Imagining a nail going right through a piece of bone and shattering the bone. And there's being no consideration at all for that. In fact, some of the movies depict that as, as a sort of a fun experience for them. 
to see somebody in such incredible pain. And what did he say was, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. Sometimes they know what they do. In other words, yes, I know what I'm doing is, is illegal. But what Jesus is saying is they don't realize that their very nature is being transgressed. Their nature of love and of consideration of others, which we were all created to be that way. So they don't realize the degree to which their rationalized and justified action or their unconscious behavior is against the nature of the love that they were born with. So it doesn't help to hate them because people don't typically respond well. If you would like to move somebody in the direction of love, then love them. Is it hard? I mean, you know, I'm very conscious and cautious about using words like it's really hard to love people because I don't want to set that up as a prayer. And I don't want you to set it up as a prayer. It will put you into some emotionally uncomfortable situations if you make this choice. Because quietly within yourself, you're going to have to toil with the temptation to dismiss a person. You know, just kind of dress them down and go, what a schmo or what a loser or whatever. Because there's a certain gratification for that experience. To make the person your enemy. To not be friends with them in that moment. To not love them. But if you take on this incredibly noble task of going, no matter what, I must love the person, that will change you. And how beautiful. Your heart will widen. You'll begin to see things about other people that are beautiful. You'll begin to see that even though this person can be difficult in these situations, here is where the divinity in them flows very freely. And you can be in awe of people. And you don't have to compete with them. And you don't have to egotistically be better than them. So it's incredibly liberating. And people will be surprised. People will be surprised that you can maintain that consciousness. In the last line of the reading, Jesus says, be perfect, therefore, as your father, mother, in heaven is perfect. Now, tuning into the energy of the passage, he's not saying, I want you to be a perfectionist. He's saying, in, in continuing this passage, strive to be perfect in the love that you give. So in a sense, the way I experience that, he's like, just try your best to never unfriend somebody in consciousness. You know, so be airtight in the fact that there's never a reason when you can go, in this case, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to enemy the person. So many times when I was sitting around I was in the order that I was raised up in and taught, people would be, well, what about Hitler? Hitler was always the classic example of the one person that we, we can't really love Hitler, can we? I mean, he was a very angry and, and, and also very persuasive individual. And it's sort of like the classic, if only he'd used that persuasiveness to bring about something good. And you know what? I believe that he thought he was. That's the weird thing, is that he believed that the solution to Germany's problems was to cleanse the population of the people that were ruining it. It would have been better if he learned how to cleanse the population of those things that were corrupting people, not of these people who are corrupting our people. So it was a classic enemy dictator. The reason that you can't hate somebody like that is because everybody has the capability to be redeemed. Everybody can have a moment of awakening to go, oh man, I totally didn't see it that way before. You guys, some of you will remember that, and I may have talked about this guy before, this killer in New York in the 70s known as Son of Sam. So Son of Sam that was the way he would sign his cryptic notes. He ended up killing something like seven people and attempting to murder another eight people. And he was a serial killer. And this was back in that era. Of course, it was way pre-internet. And so the newspapers and the, and the broadcasts were, you know, it was like a, a, a movie. Just like this guy was roaming around New York, known as Son of Sam, just a weird name. 
Eventually they caught him. And his name is David Berkowitz. And his story is an example of somebody who has been redeemed, who was just completely caught up in darkness, who was intentionally going out to kill certain people because he had gotten involved in some really dark ideas. But 10 years into his prison sentence, in which he was mostly miserable and depressed, as you can imagine, somebody made an effort to share with him about God and even about Jesus. And he was Jewish, so typically you know, Jewish folks are not that open to the Jesus stuff. But I guess when you're sitting in prison for the rest of your life and somebody made an effort, and he said, you know, he was kind of like, just leave me alone, I don't want to talk to anybody. But this guy was persistent, and he said one night he, he fell on his knees in his cell and he just prayed, if, you, if this is real, and you know, if you're really gonna do something for me, then let it be, like show it to me. And he had some sort of experience. I don't remember the details of it. But I believe in that experience, he started weeping. So something had, had touched his heart. And as the, I mean, it wasn't an overnight transformation, but I think something like over a year, a year and a half, this guy kept working with him and helping him to, to come into a sense of acceptance about where he was at when he did those things and how no matter what, God could forgive him for them. Uh, he realized that he'll probably be in, in jail or in prison the rest of his life. However, he could redeem himself through positive actions, through actions of love. And that he could really be, he could accept the fact that he had been forgiven for his errors. And if you are open-hearted and you, and you see videos of him online and you read his story, you know that he's had a conversion experience. Somebody that was, you know, like, sitting at home, entertaining demonic activities, going out and killing people, and then sort of sending out these cryptic notes. Just a human being that had gotten lost, had been neglected by parents, he was kind of a bit of an awkward person, so he was treated badly by social you know, groups, nowhere to fit in, find some source of power through killing people and through infamy, to have some sort of an awakening later on. I bet you a lot of people would never be able to forgive him, people who were around at that time, because it was such a, a terrifying era for people. But God can. God can say, I see that you were lost, and so we're going to give you another shot. We're always going to give you another shot. And I believe even somebody as heinous as Hitler could have that awakening. Maybe not, but that's the personal's choice, the individual's choice to do so. So we have to maintain the possibility of that. That's what Jesus is asking us to do. And if everybody did that on the planet, we really wouldn't have wars and we wouldn't have the conflict-based culture that we have. Us against them, good versus evil, et cetera, et cetera. Meaning good person, good people versus evil people. So as you go about your day and your life this week, begin to notice when you don't get your way and what happens for you emotionally and how you begin to project that onto the people who are apparently in the way of you having your way. Remember, we're striving to walk the way, with a capital W, the way of love. And if we walk the way of love, we're going to have to learn how to process these difficult emotions and not succumb to the temptation to dismiss a person as heinous or as you know, a loser or as a complete a-hole or whatever it is. You can't do that anymore. 